everybody. I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm so glad you decided to join us today and I'm so excited to have a very special guest. Chef Jean Vonderville from Savannah Technical Culinary School is my special guest and welcome. Thank you. I'm so I'm happy, happy to, to have you. Here. Well, and we are just into this new year and just celebrating all things wonderful and certainly that to me is bread. So no better guest than you to join us for that. So what are we going to be preparing today? Well, first of all, we're going to prepare an apple and uh, a caramelized apple and pear uh, tart. And then after that, we will do uh, no need bread. Perfect. Well, let's get started. And let's you know, I'm going to be your student today, <laughs> so I'm going to have the recipe handy while you're doing this. And I want all of you to tune in and watch because it's just such an interesting recipe. Very good. So uh, we peel and core the apples and pear first. And because they are in uh, uh, water with lemon juice to prevent discoloration. And look, they held up very well. Absolutely. So I'm going to dry them out a little bit here. And you know, we with partner the with the Fresh Market and it's just great because you can go in any time of the year and pick up this wonderful fruit to use for these sorts of recipes. There we go. So this looks good now. We're going to take a cast iron skillet. And I will talk about the skillet, my choice of skillet, a little bit uh, later. But uh, we're I'm, getting our hands into that. There we go. So now we're gonna cover generously the pan with butter. Okay, everything is better with butter. <laughs> and we, that is generous for sure. This is generous. So we do this by hand, put a coat on it about, I will say, a quarter of an inch. Got a little bit of leftover. Okay. Very good. There. And now the next step, it's gonna be, and maybe you can help me on that one. We're gonna put Absolutely. this in the middle and okay. do this. And I'm gonna place the apple, and what I want you to do is to place the pear in between. Oh, okay. I can do that. Very good. You know, it's obvious that you're not from the state of Georgia. No, I was born <laughs> and uh, raised in France. That's where I got my training. Oh, this is going to be so pretty too. There we go. Okay. So we're going to make it really tight because the apple and the, the pear, they have a tendency to shrink a little bit when they're going to be cooked. In the meantime, I can get started with... Oh, that looks so good. The, the stove. Well, I can surely tell you that I've never done anything mm. like this. So this is great. Done. Done. There we go. So we're going to place a little bit more here. And... Uh, Any more? Well, uh, maybe a couple more. Okay. There we go. We can afford that. There. Now, this is going to go on the stove, on high. And what I do now, I'm going to sprinkle the sugar, and that sugar will caramelize with the butter. Oh, gosh. That's it. This is going to go now for probably around 20 minutes. Okay. okay to, to get everything, the time to caramelize. So. Well, tell me a little bit about this recipe and why you like it. Well, I like that recipe, and this is an original, and it comes from uh, uh, Two sisters, back in the 19th century, they had a restaurant and an hotel back in France. And uh, one day they had celebrity coming at the restaurant. They kind of made a dessert that went wrong oh, no. with apple. And very fast they make up uh, a dish that it was this. Celebrity loved it. Bottom line is, now it's world famous. It's a famous recipe. Okay, I hear it moving over there. I hear it. There we the... go. Okay. So, one thing guys, this caramelize all the time. You see, you're gonna you wiggle kind of this wiggle a little bit. Okay, okay, to make sure that there is, um, I, you can use a non-stick pan. I like the cast iron because it really keeps the heat. Well, what we're going to do is keep letting that cook. And while we go to the break, we're going to do some more things with that. But when you come back, he's going to roll this pastry out. And this is when all of the intricacies of it come to play. So come back with us in just a few minutes. And that's going to be
Welcome back, everyone. And if you're just joining us, I'm in the kitchen today with Chef Jean Vondeville, who is the chef and just inspiration at Savannah Culinary Institute. And he's actually the 2014 top chef educator for the American Culinary Federation. And what an honor. Well, thank you. Uh, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I really need to be looking at this paper because <laughs> I've got to learn today. But um, I see you, the uh, pears and the apples just caramelized beautifully. Yeah, we are ready to cover this now. Uh, so we have our dough that we make uh, before. I'm, I'm looking and everything he's done is exactly by the recipe. And you know, we're, he was nice enough to give the recipe to us and it'll be on our website at veryvera.com. Now, instead of dusting with flour, regular flour, I'm gonna dust with sugar. And uh, what I wanna create here is to have a little bit more caramelization on, on the dough and get a nice little crunch when this here will be oh, baked. What a great idea. So what we do here, we're gonna roll the dough to about one eighth of an inch uh, in thickness. And that dough is holding up so well. This needs to be done ahead of time. You can do the day before and uh, get it refrigerated and it's very, very easy to roll and work with it. So we, just about ready here now. Gosh, it's almost a perfect circle. You know what you're doing. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna transfer the dough here. You can cut a circle if you want, but for me what I like to do is, you see, loosen up a little bit, and then with your hand, cut it on the edge like this. Very simple. And now, this we have this. With your hand flat, you're gonna bring back the dough and get the dough going all the way down to the pot. Just like that. Oh, wow. And this is one of those Le Quisay, um enameled cast iron pans. This is cast iron. I, I like cast iron because it allows me to, uh, to be able to see the color of the caramel, keep the heat but uh, you can use a non-stick pan or even uh, uh, a Pyrex or something like that when you can see. So we are, we are pretty good. Now this is gonna be ready to go in the oven. We're gonna bake it. Well, let me ask you, all this leftover right here, mm -hmm. could we do any sort, do you ever do any sort of garnish on the top or is this something that I know we used to do a cobbler that used the leftover pie crust Certainly, this is good to use for something else. I, you know me, I hate to waste anything. Okay, I'll give you my any... secret now. Okay, what's All your right. secret? What I do, I get the dough, I put it on the sheet tray with a little bit of parchment paper and I bake it as is. And at the end, I just break it and eat it that way. Uh, see, that was what I was getting at, is it's just such a great I cannot put anything on it because this is gonna be flipped. So any decoration, you won't see it. I see, well, that's a great point. Well, as you can see, this recipe took a little bit of time in terms of caramelizing the fruit, but you've used the same pan. We haven't messed it much up. The dough was beautifully went together there, rolled out so well. And then the technique here with pressing it down mm -hmm. is something that once you've seen someone do it, you know, I'm, I, and it reads very well in your recipe, but watching you do it makes it what, such great sense. Yes, and you can see it's really down on the edges of the pan and it's no shrinkage, nothing, it's just go in it. Like absolutely. a pie would do. Perfectly. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Well, this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven. It's, if you have the convection feature, you recommend that. It will be better. If not, we want to use the center rack Correct. in just a traditional oven. Yes. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna be making bread. Yes! That's, that's why I go to the gym, so I can <laughs> eat bread. Okay, so come back with us in just a few minutes. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Someone asked me recently, do you really need to cream the butter and sugar for up to 20 minutes when baking? Let's go into the lab. The short answer is yes. Creaming the sugar and the butter for an extended period of time is going to incorporate air 
into the mixture, which you need in order for your baked products to rise and be nice and fluffy. The old fashioned recipes would say cream for 15 to 20 minutes, cream to the mixture turning from a dark yellow to a light yellow. But if you need a more scientific answer, my recommendation is to take a container with some just plain vegetable oil. You're gonna take just a little bit of the mixture off of your spatula there. And if you push it and it goes into the oil and sinks to the bottom, that means you need to go back to the mixer for just a few minutes. But if it comes off of your skewer and sits on top of the oil, and doesn't go down to the bottom, then you've incorporated the air, you're gonna have the perfect baked product. I hope that little bit of chemistry in the kitchen will help you the next time you get ready to bake something. But I wanna remind you, we're talking about things for this year that have helped you stay energized so you can get in the kitchen and do some of these great recipes. So don't forget to look at your local park for places to ride your bike, walk your dog, do things with your kids. It's a great way to energize. Welcome back, everybody. And I don't know about you, Chef, but I'm having a blast. Wonderful. I'm having a blast, too, I, you know, especially. And I just love being your student today. <laughs> you know, these students at Savannah Culinary School just must be so inspired from your energy and your passion and what you're doing. And, you know, obviously, you have grown that program by leaps and bounds. Well, we, uh, from the time I started into now, yes, we put a, a few hundred more on the, on the capacity. So uh, this is something that I really enjoy to do is uh, artisan bread. Well, while we were away during the break, we got the tart in the oven. In the oven. And so, uh, it just smells so good in here right now. So now we're gonna get started on the no-need bread. On the no-need bread. So first, it's, a, it's very simple, and I like that method. Uh, you don't lose anything on the flavor, but what happened is... And what kind of flour is this? This is just a, a bread flour. Okay. Okay, very high. And you like the King Arthur. I've worked with King Arthur mm -hmm. uh, for a long, long time. Salt, and believe it or not, this is only one gram of yeast, okay? Okay. People have a problem uh, to be gluten intolerant and all of that. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret. We work pretty much with no yeast. We use all natural culture and it makes your bread, you digest the bread so much better oh. by doing this, okay? So we just mix the dry ingredients just like this. Now we're gonna add the water, okay? I'm going to is reserve... Is that just room temperature? That water is at room temperature. Okay. And I reserve a little bit of water on the side, just in case. Uh, some flour absorb more moisture than some other, but what I want is just to mix this until I start you to form a dough. Are. You see, this is a little dry to me mm -hmm. for the dough, so I really can go and add pretty much the remaining of of the water. And see, this is why I'm, I'm just so honored to be standing next to you while you prepare your recipe, because these little tidbits, like, don't just throw all the water in, you know, at once is part of the technique. And there, you see, just a oh, little mixing. It's perfect. Okay, this is done. You can do it with a spoon, you can do it with your hand. Uh, if you like to get your hand dirty, please do so. But you see, this what we got now. Uh, it's a, a fairly sticky right. dough, very soft, okay? So this is done. In any type of bread you're gonna make, you're gonna say, no, no, you didn't need, you didn't work with it. Mm -hmm. There is no gluten development. Mm -hmm. It's done here, okay? Right. So this has to rest now for 12 to 18 hours. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it over here to rest. All right, and 
This is the way it's gonna look like. Now, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna open it slightly. Go for it. Taste of uh, it's heaven. You uh, see those little is. hearts going oh out? I love it. I love it. Oh, I love this. Okay, so this is after 18 hours. 18 hours. This is what we got. One gram of yeast. Now, here, a little bit of semolina all around. Now, what is that? Semolina. Okay. And very gently, with a little scraper, oh. I'm going to loosen up. And I can see the up. bubbles and... Yes. Okay. Just, I'm going to add a little bit more. And now what I'm doing is, I'm going to bring the edges into the center, just like this. Okay. Oh, I cannot wait to do this recipe. Look at this. Oh. It's so easy, but you can see yes. the 18 hours create that gluten development. And this is done. Now, we're gonna transfer the dough into what we call in French a cloche. Okay? okay this now. is special. Normally, I can bake them in a cast iron. This is, now, can you pick it up this Okay, now, let, let, me t let me feel that. Okay. Because okay. we're looking for weight, right? Right, and now try with this. Oh, <laughs> that's quite a bit of difference. There we go. But you can use either one. You can use either okay. one, but I like this one. I am generously put some semolina in the bottom, and now, We're pretty much ready to transfer ah. this dough in the middle. Look at that. We're gonna place the cloche back. And this is gonna rise for two hours before okay. baking. And the bread will be done. You see, very little work. Oh, and you made it look so easy and so perfect. Well, okay, we've got some more baking to do. Absolutely. Right? And when we come back from the break, we're going to show the magic of television. <laughs> with all of this finished, I'm going to get to taste, and I can't wait. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody, and I, you know what? We have absolutely done it today. We've done it. Oh, it is just fantastic, and while we were away during the break, you got that tart out of the oven. So we got it out of the oven, and what I've done is uh, place um, a plate on the top of the cast iron dish and just flip it, and uh, this, is, uh, this is the result. Ah. A nice, beautiful caramel color. It is just fantastic, and here we've got a slice of it, and with just garnish, just simple garnish for this plate with a little bit of vanilla bean that you can pick up at Fresh Market. And while you're starting on that bread, I'm gonna add a scoop of vanilla ice cream to the top. Great pie. for you. Okay, so this is the bread that came out of the oven. Now, if you uh, remember the amount of dough that we have and compared to now, what we have here. Oh. Look at look at this bread. It's absolutely phenomenal. Oh, it is beautiful. So this is about 18 hours, two hours rising, one hour baking to get something like this. Uh, all oh. those little holes, it's normal when you have something of that quality, okay? And uh, we the should have- The noise that it made when you were cutting into it, it's just that crispy crust. Absolutely. It's just, it's just fantastic. Well, and then in terms of what you use with this bread, you know, it can be an herbed salt, plenty of butter. Um, we've got different um, preserves there that you've got to go with that. Yes, uh, uh, cherry and um, uh, citrus. And of course, I always choose with good bread, a good quality butter. Okay, so this is an Irish uh, butter Ooh. and, um, and it brings out the flavor. Use salted butter as well. 
Uh, a bread from that quality to bring out the flavor is always better to eat it cold. Oh, People okay. have a tendency to eat a sourdough warm, or it's mm -hmm. wrong in my opinion. You bring out the flavor when the bread is cold. Ah, that yeast flavor is there, and it's just, as you said, just so light and beautiful. Oh, I just love it. So well, we you know, I certainly <laughs> want everyone to go to the Savannah um, Culinary Institute for more information about this program because obviously there's quite a bit going on there. And as I always say, our recipes are available on our website at verybeer.com. I want to, you know, also speak to the fact that the leftover. This is what I got. <laughs> I know, and it's just like this little treat that Look you said it. that, it, and it's like a cookie. It's fantastic. So never, never waste anything. But, um, you know, I always say on the show, Chef, that no matter what you do, do it in good taste, and certainly you, you're you bringing out the beauty of fresh ingredients, Thank the co incorporation of your hands and your art and your passion into what you do. You guys need to continue to follow him because he is going places and so is this program. I want to invite you to come back with us again next weekend, but with the good taste, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I'm going to start by tasting a little bit of this. And this and is what I got. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my goodness. Safe travels. Come back and see us next weekend.